Take a deep breath. There are about 50 sextillion atoms in every breath that you breathe in. That's a five, followed by 22 zeros. Seven octillion atoms make up your body. That's a seven, followed by 27 zeros. The whole of planet Earth is composed of 100 quindecillion atoms, or a one, followed by 50 zeros. In the entire observable universe, 46 billion light years across, there are thought to be up to 100,000 quadrillion vigintillion atoms, or a one, followed by 82 zeros. And the biggest number in the cosmos can actually be arrived at by dividing the total volume of the observable universe by the smallest possible unit of volume, the Planck space. Dividing everything we can see into minuscule cubes, we end up with 1 times 10 to the power of 185 of those cubes. And yet that is not yet the biggest number that humans have conceived. Take, for example, the Goliath that is tree 3. As Antonio Padilla, physicist at Nottingham University, puts it, everything you think you know, is dwarfed into nothing. Welcome to the game of trees. You start with a coloured seed, which can give rise to a tree, whose branches end in seeds that can sprout their own trees. The goal is to make as many trees as possible, and there are two main rules. The first tree must contain one seed, the second a maximum of two seeds, the third a maximum of three seeds, and so on. At each level, the tree can contain less than the maximum number, but that maximum is fixed to correspond to the level you're at. Secondly, the game ends and the forest dies if you create a tree that already exists within the forest. So if you repeat a pattern of coloured seeds that are linked together, no matter how far away it is in the forest, it is game over. Mathematicians have played this game with different numbers of seed colours. Tree 1 allows only a single seed colour, and the forest dies at the first tree. The second seed you add is necessarily a repeat of the first. Tree 2 can last up to three trees. Starting with one colour, you make a tree that contains two branches, both of a second colour. The next tree has just one branch. By the next step, all possible combinations of two colours have already been used, and you can't avoid building a tree that's already been seen. But then you come to tree 3. Tree 3 uses three colours. And tree 3 is different. Whereas the previous forests died disappointingly quickly, a forest of three coloured seeds grows for an extraordinarily long time. Mathematicians have proved the game must end at some point, but they've not been able to count the trees it would take to get there. They've not been able to, because if they did, their brains would implode. As Antonio Padilla goes on to say in his exploration of huge numbers, for a while you feel nothing untoward, a string of digits growing larger and larger in your mind's eye. And then it happens. Just trying to imagine a number that large is more than the human brain can take. Trying to hold that number of digits in your head would result in a black hole forming from the sheer quantity of information crammed inside. Indeed, faced with all the digits of tree 3, scientists believe that the entire observable universe will also suffer the same fate. And so, the solution to tree 3 is, without a doubt, a mind-bendingly enormous number. But it is still a finite number. And so, it is still smaller than infinity. In fact, however big the solution to tree 3 is, it is much, much closer to zero than it is to infinity. Whereas counting to the top of tree 3 may be a foolish thing to attempt, it isn't futile, because there is an end. But infinity has no end. It just keeps going, without reprieve. For every digit, every object, every anything, no matter how large, there is another waiting in line. And another. And another. So, what happens when you keep going? Is the universe itself infinite? And what would it mean to live in a universe that never ended? Take a deep breath. Things 
are about to get weird. <laughs> 